Well, uh, good afternoon, uh, everybody, and uh, please take a seat. Um, don't stand on uh, formality. <coughs> and uh, just want to thank the, uh, the Governor for um, making her home uh, available uh, to us today to uh, hold this uh, press conference with my uh, very good friend, the Trade Minister for India, uh, Piyush Goyal. Um, and it's uh, absolutely wonderful to have you here. Um, when I first became the Trade Minister for Australia, I was lucky enough to be invited to uh, uh, Piyush's uh, home in, uh, in New Delhi and uh, have a wonderful feast uh, with him uh, and his wife. And uh, a little bit later on today, uh, I'm going to return the favour and we're heading out to the magnificent uh, Clare Valley. Um, and uh, we're going to have a, uh, a wonderful uh, meal out, uh, out in the Clare together uh, this evening. Uh, we've just wrapped up our face-to-face -face meeting um, and it's the uh, first meeting uh, that we've had since the uh, Modi government was recently uh, re-elected and of course um, follows on the weekend's events between our Prime Minister and uh, Prime Minister Modi uh, in Delaware with the, uh, the Japanese and the, uh, the American uh, leaders. Uh, I think it's fair to say that the relationship between Australia and India has never ever been uh, closer. Um, and to reflect that, um, of course, is uh, the uh, economic relationship between our two countries, uh, and it has never ever been, uh, been better. Uh, following uh, our uh, trade agreement that was ratified uh, during the course of this uh, parliamentary session, uh, trade with India is turning out to be a really big win for Australia. Um, and today uh, we held in-depth discussions on how to accelerate that trading relationship, but in addition to that, our investment relationship uh, by building on the enormous growth that we've just uh, seen in recent times. Just to give you some example uh, of that, uh, in the 18 months since our trade agreement with India came into force, nearly $30 billion worth of Australian exports, so $30 billion worth of Australian exports have entered India either with zero tariffs or lower tariffs than any of our competitors. Agricultural exports to India are up around 60% to $1.6 billion, and we know how important that is to the South Australian economy. Industrial equipment and manufacturing exports are up 66%, or $145 million, and our health exports to India have increased by nearly 40% to $33 million. Australian consumers are, of course, benefiting uh, by our trade deals uh, with savings at the checkouts worth around $225 million thanks to the lower tariffs on products that are coming in from, from India. During our meeting, Minister Goyal and I discussed how we can grow our two-way trade and investment even more. A key focus of today's discussion was our next free trade agreement uh, called the Comprehensive Economic Cooperation Agreement. Our trade, uh, trade negotiators recently met in Sydney uh, and today's uh, discussions show that there's real momentum here to get an agreement as we, uh, as we work out the, uh, the details. For Australia, we've made it clear that we have much to offer our friends in India, particularly in agriculture, as well as the emerging sectors we are building as part of our future made in Australia. We also exchanged a memorandum of understanding on investment cooperation between Austrade and Invest India, which will help boost two-way investment between our countries. Our government has also wrapped up consultations on our new India economic roadmap. We've held over 400 consultation sessions across every Australian state and territory and in India. Over the past two days, uh, Minister Goyal has heard from a range of Australian businesses who see wonderful opportunities to partner with India in sectors like green energy, education skills, 
tourism, uh, agriculture and technology. And in a few moments, the Minister and I uh, will walk up to the Australian Space Agency headquarters and to meet some of the Australian space startups that are pion pioneering directly with, uh, with India. Our government is to, committed to driving uh, more practical cooperation between Australia and Indian businesses. That's why today I'm announcing t uh, $10 million in new grants for Australian businesses, organisations and university to boost cooperation with India. By extending the, uh, the $10 million Maytree grants program, the government will deliver firstly $5 million for Australian organisations working on projects that boost trade and innovation, cultural ties and community links, and then a further $5 million for scholars and fellowships to support Australian universities to host uh, some of the brightest Indian students in their research and on some of our biggest shared challenges. Uh, as I indicated before, <coughs> Uh, the Minister uh, and our wives will be heading out to uh, the magnificent Clare Valley uh, and we'll continue to discuss wonderful opportunities between our two countries. And I'd invite uh, my good friend Piyush to um, say some words about uh, today's events and uh, his time in Australia. Thank you very much, uh, Honourable Don Farrell, Member of Parliament and Minister for Trade and Industry, someone I look upon as not only a friend and well-wisher, but a brother who has been a guide, who has helped me understand trade nuances, very sensitive, ever smiling, and a well-wisher of the Australia-India partnership. Thank you very much for your warm hospitality. Thank you very much for bringing me to Adelaide for the first time. What a beautiful city, charming, a place we've heard about from childhood when cricket matches, and in the good old days we had five-day test matches where every wicket Falling was blown all over the television and radio. But to actually be right across from the Adelaide Stadium is truly a memorable visit for me. We've had a very good engagement with Australian business persons in Sydney over the last two days. The excitement is truly palpable on both sides, Australian business and Indian business. For the first time ever, both our major chambers, the Confederation of Indian Industries and the Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry were represented by their top leadership together as a testimony of the importance that the Australia relationship is to India. We are looking at significantly upscaling our partnerships in trade, investment, tourism, and technology. And therefore, one of the first announcements I'd like to make is that we shall shortly be setting up in Sydney an office covering all these four areas, IT, investment, trade, technology, and tourism, with representatives of Invest India, representatives of the organization responsible for building industrial smart cities and townships, NICDIC, representatives of our Export Credit Guarantee Corporation, and other officials related to trade and tourism, along with the private sector, CII, jointly manning these offices to act as a bridge between investors and businesses on both sides and working closely together with Austrade, with whom Invest India has today exchanged an MOU 
for mutual investment promotion, technology and trade facilitation, and other insights into economic activity. Thank you very much, uh, Dawn, for uh, giving us the encouragement to work together on these areas. And I'm sure the unprecedented ties that our two countries are sharing today with nine in-person meetings since 20, May 2022, in less than three years, nine in-person meetings of our senior leaders, both prime ministers, reflecting the deep bonding that uh, both prime ministers, the political leadership have, which supplements the business-to-business -business and people-to-people -people connect that Australia and India share. Friends, today is a very important day in India. We are celebrating 10 years of our Make in India program. Prime Minister Modi, in, on 25th of September 2014, had launched this initiative. And through the Make in India program, over the last 10 years, we have significantly had a whole of the government approach to addressing the challenges that manufacturing in India had faced, whether it is provision of plug and play infrastructure, a national single window for all approvals, whether it is reducing compliance burden or decriminalizing laws, opening up foreign direct investment in newer sectors, making it easier to invest in India, or encouraging the startup ecosystem. It's been a multi-pronged approach to attract manufacturing in India. And I do see a lot of promise between the Make in India program and the Future Made in Australia program that your government has launched so that we can exchange technologies, exchange opportunities, and encourage businesses on both sides to work with each other. This enhanced cooperation, be it in education, be it in skill development, tourism, investments, critical minerals, which we discussed at length today, or renewable energy, green ecosystem towards sustainability. All of these are areas where this relationship holds tremendous potential. And India is committed to partner with Australia to provide a bouquet of opportunities to our business persons on both sides so that we can work towards a greater and more ambitious relationship on the economic front. Friends, as uh, Minister Farrell mentioned, Ekta, and I think some of you may recall, Ekta in India, in Hindi, is unity. This agreement has truly been a game changer, provided greater market access to businesses on both sides, and has resulted in a significant increase in merchandise trade. We are looking at uh, further strengthening the ECTA agreement through the Comprehensive Economic uh, Partnership Agreement, the SICA. And we do hope to see a greater flow of goods and services, along with investments, flowing out of the SICA, which we are looking to conclude at an early date to unlock new dimensions in this partnership and provide further momentum to this business relationship. Friends, uh, I must mention that we have also discussed at length greater cooperation at various multilateral fora like the WTO, the G20, the IPEF, and other international organizations where Australia and India share common interests. India is the world's fastest growing economy today. We grew at 8.2% last year. The economy today is the fifth largest in the world, expected to become the third largest 
in the next three years. We will cross the $7 trillion mark by 2030 and the $10 trillion mark by 2034, 10 years from now. We are very confident of achieving a developed country status by 2047. Viksit Bharat 2047 is our ambition, is our goal, taking up our economy to 10 times today's size, to a $35 trillion economy in the next 25 years or so, so that we can meet the aspirations of 1.4 billion Indians for a better quality of life. And I see Australia playing an important role in this journey towards making India a developed nation, a role through greater trade, a role through exchange of technologies, a role in our common goals for sustainability, and a significant role when it comes to provision of high-tech services and investments. India offers the advantage of four Ds. The first is our democracy. We are a vibrant democracy, the world's largest democracy. The rule of law prevails. We provide safety and security for investment and people. And uh, I think in today's day and age, two democracies working together provides a great comfort to investors in the long run. The second D is our demographic dividend. A young population with an average age of 28.4 years, expected to remain young for many more years to come, with two thirds of our population in the working age group, providing skills, talent, and huge manpower force to help the economy grow faster. The third D is demand. 1.4 billion aspirational Indians demanding high quality goods and services <clears throat> is a huge market opportunity and growth opportunity. And the fourth D is decisive leadership. The Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi and the government are willing to reform, transform and perform to take the country to greater heights. I am very confident that together we shall make the Australia-India partnership a defining partnership of the decade, if not the 21st century. The kangaroos and the tigers together have a combined strength which is unstoppable. Thank you. Yeah, I think we should give uh, Piyush a, a clap for that. <laughs> and uh, thank you very much, my friend. And uh, we'll open to, uh, to questions. Um, we are very optimistic that um, the good work that was done today uh, will result uh, in a, uh, an expanded uh, agreement. As we saw with the United Arab Emirates, um, when both parties put their mind to it, we can very quickly uh, expedite um, the discussions to finalise an agreement. And I'd be hopeful that uh, with goodwill on both sides, and you can see today um, that's uh, uh, that's uh, being demonstrated here. I think with goodwill, we can very quickly resolve this uh, uh, this issue and uh, we can have a, uh, a new upgraded uh, agreement between Australia and India. Uh, Madam, I think uh, the important and defining feature of our discussions and negotiations is the sensitivity that both sides have to each other's uh, issues, uh, defensive interests, offensive interests, all are considered together in a manner which will only result in a win-win situation. So any issue that um, I can see Australia would uh, be uncomfortable with, I would not like to push on press on that. 
And likewise, our approach has been that if something is very sensitive to a large Indian population, given our current uh, status of development, Australia has been very gracious in their understanding of our sensitivities. It is that deep uh, confidence in uh, each other that helps us to resolve issues very fast. And I'm very confident that the final agreement will only help grow this relationship. Uh, you saw that our first agreement didn't have any negative uh, press or any negative uh, public uh, outcry. I'm sure the second agreement will correspondingly be a good mix of the good things that people want out of the agreement. I, th I think it's worthwhile uh, <clears throat> repeating that when we were last in India together, we committed to um, uh, increasing our trade from its current uh, for a $49 uh, <clears throat> billion two-way trade to $100 billion by the end of the decade. and. Uh, I think we're, uh, I'm certainly happy, and I think I speak for uh, Piyush here, to uh, restate that today. We want, we want to double that trade between our countries between now and the end of the decade. Just on that, Minister Goyal, India has traditionally been hesitant about removing barriers to Australian exports in sensitive sectors like dairy. Um, have you had consultations with those domestic producers, and has the government consulted with its coalition partners on any of those First of all, the government in India is a strong government. The coalition is a pre-poll alliance. So we have very seamless consultations and very seamless understanding on any decisions that the government takes. As regards dairy, that sector was discussed even before we started the negotiations with Australia three years ago. And uh, Indian dairy is very significantly different from Australian dairy. Our average holding with the farmer is a small two-acre, three-acre farm with three or four livestock, whereas Australia's farms and their uh, dairy farms are both very large, and it would be near impossible for these large farms and these small farms to compete with each other on a common footing. We had discussed this issue even three years ago and on earlier occasions. And uh, dairy is such a sensitive subject in that in any of our FTAs across the world, we have not been able to open up the dairy sector with duty concessions. Dairy is permitted in India, but there are certain uh, duties imposed on that. This uh, is one sector where there is no discussion with any coalition partner. Even when we were a full majority government, there was no opening up of the dairy. It's, uh, it's actually two very unequal situations and would not lend themselves to fair trade between the two countries or between any countries. We have neither opened up dairy in Europe or planning to open up dairy in Europe, nor have we opened it up even with Switzerland and Norway with whom we have recently concluded a FTA under, uh, the, under the EFTA grouping, Switzerland, Norway, Liechtenstein, and Iceland. Even there, we have not opened up dairy. It's the first agreement Switzerland has signed without any component of dairy in it. Uh, well, I'm an optimistic sort of person, uh, and uh, I think the only way you can do this job is to, uh, uh, to be uh, optimistic. Um, if you think about this, uh, when we came to government uh, two and a half years ago, we had $20 billion <coughs> worth of impediments uh, between Australia uh, and, uh, and China. Uh, we have reduced that um, uh, over time to less than $1 billion. And the one product that is still outstanding, unfortunately, uh, is, uh, is lobster. Um, we've recently had uh, meetings, both with the Chinese uh, Premier uh, and also my counterpart, Wen Wen Tao. In fact, uh, as, uh, as uh, Piyush has done, he's, they both came to Adelaide. It's 
becoming a bit of a feature of international trade these days. Everyone's coming to Adelaide. Um, I'm confident that we can resolve the outstanding issues uh, in a timely, uh, timely manner. It is unfortunate that is that issue hasn't been resolved. Um, the government um, is doing its absolute best uh, to resolve it, but um, these issues do take time um, uh, and uh, we'll continue to work very closely with the Chinese government to put, uh, put aside all of the outstanding issues between our two governments. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, wherever you like. <clears throat> Hello, Paul Starrick from the Advertiser in Adelaide. Um, two questions, uh, one for both ministers. Um, you mentioned agriculture as a significant component of the next phase of your agreement. Do you care to elaborate on that? What particular opportunities do you see? And um, secondly, for Senator Farrell, um, regarding an unrelated issue at the Wireless Steelworks, the Premier has talked about the importance of that as a national enterprise. Um, do you agree and what response given its current predicament, do you think is appropriate at a national level? Um, well, look, in terms of agriculture, we're, we're talking about the removal of all of the, the uh, issues, that, uh, the tariffs that uh, weren't removed at the last process. So we made very significant progress. Um, but as the minister said, some of the more difficult issues were not resolved at that issue. We put them to one side. They're all back on the table. So things like chip chickpeas, pistachios, um, uh, apples. Um, so all of the issues, all of the products where there are still tariffs, um, wine is another one, um, uh, we are seeking to have those uh, tariffs uh, removed. But I don't want to go into the details of the negotiations. It's not uh, appropriate to, to do that here. Um, but we'll continue to work through. And as uh, Piyush said, um, where issues are difficult, we understand that, and we're not going to make life uh, any more difficult for the, uh, the Indian uh, government. On the other issue, uh, look, I'm aware that there have been some discussions between the, uh, uh, the Prime Minister uh, and, uh, and the Premier over the issue of, uh, of Wyala. Obviously, steel making is uh, a very important uh, uh, business in, uh, in Wyala. We want to, as a government, we want to see uh, still making continue and of course uh, all of those jobs uh, be, be protected uh, and we will of course um, continue those discussions uh, between the, uh, the Prime Minister and the, uh, and, the, and the Premier. You might like to answer I that think, first question. I think he has uh, very rightly put it, we let the negotiators take the discussions forward and uh, give them a chance to look at what are the possibilities as we conclude the seeker. Well, if there are no other questions, thank you very much you. for um, coming along today, and um, we'll head up to the space agency after a quick, um, a quick, uh, a quick lunch with the premier and the governor. Thank you very much for attending. Thank you, friends.